Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder. I'm my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by Autoclose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, I know we I don't have a guest today, but why don't you just tell the audience what our uh, episode will be about today? I'm preparing you. So uh, we've got a webinar coming up. We're going to talk about how to use video inside of your emails and specifically sales emails. There's a whole different thing about marketing emails. We'll leave that for another day. This is me trying to get you thinking ahead of time for the show so that you've come in, you come in with some ideas. So um, video and emails, any use cases, any things that you do, what have you got? I mean, I definitely think there's a use case for videos and emails. I think one thing, uh, and it's weird, I said this two, three years ago, I thought a lot more people would have adapted video by now just because it's different and it makes you kind of stand out. So if you're getting you know, 20, 30 emails a day and one person sends you a nice video, um, you would be more likely to reply. But I don't know if that's the case uh, because I know, for example, Vidyard has been prospecting to me and I, I kind of watched the video, but I actually never replied to the email. But I will say there are some pros and obviously some cons to having video and email. Um, to start off with some of the pros I find, Ollie, um, I think video helps people connect with the content better. Um, I know personally, I rather watch a 30 second video than read a 30 second script just to kind of see instead of actually having to focus on the reading. Um, and I think they're versatile. So the one thing you can do in an email is if you want to, you know, show something, you can show something in a very unique way with images and different things in your video. Um, but those are some of the pros that just come to mind right off the bat. But what do you think, Ollie? I'm with you. I thought a lot more people would give it a go. It feels like it's been spoken about quite a lot for quite a long time. And still, it's fairly rare that I actually receive one. Now, maybe what I'll do is I'll set up a ghost company and I'll call myself the founder, CEO, president, you know, whatever. And maybe I'll get some more. But um, I do think it's not as prevalent as what most people think. In, in tech companies, it's a bit of an echo chamber and everyone talks about the same stuff. It's probably more prevalent there than anywhere else by a big, big margin. I think it still has one quite big problem when people do it though. The novelty effect is one thing. If you've never been sent a video before, you're like, oh wow, what is this? I'm gonna have a look. But beyond that, and once you've seen it a couple of times, you know what it is and it's the same as the email, except they've just taken more time and done something else as well. So I think what you've really got to get past the novelty and then you've got to find an interesting way to use that inside of the email to add something. And that's the part where a lot of reps don't do that quite right. Um, as my cat, obviously, she knows I'm on a podcast, so she wants to come and say hello, doesn't she? This is what we do every week. But um, I think that's the main problem. Like, if you wanted to, for instance, show, um, let's make an example up for auto close. We've made a new template that is available to all of our customers inside of the template library. And it's converting one and a half times better than other templates that we've seen clients use. Let's do a video to show them it and ask for interest after that. We don't have to book a call to show them a template. Yeah. We could download huh. it, but that's kind of here or there. It's it's adding something different. Whereas I think a lot of people just go like, hey, I saw that you did this. And that's the body of the email. They've just done it in a video. So it's different, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, it was funny. I was reading a few weeks ago and, you know, it was a, it was a comment I read that says, you know, our brains process visuals faster than text. And... You know, I mean, that would be the case if you are, you know, reading emails and and getting video and email, and you know, and, and we're just kind of saying because of this, you know, video can help a viewer, someone, audience understand the content's message easier than it would if somebody wrote some long salesy email. Do you find that the case? That kind of like you personally, I know, I know me, I'm I'm a visual learner, but you personally, are you more of a visual learner? Or are you more one of those that has to open the book and kind of read it? rather than see it um i find it hard to visualize stuff so i do need to see it but i find with a video unless i've been compelled to open it for something other than the body of the email i don't bother because i know what it is like if i sent you a video now because we know each other you'd probably open it and watch it to see what am i trying to communicate if i gave you nothing else but if i don't know you i don't care what the email says nor do i care what the video says nor do i care what the voice note says into other mediums so it's it's difficult I, but but if they showed me something like like i said uh, here's some accounts that are looking at your website right now or something like that that's a very yeah. common one people like to attach that and show you that and do a video 
then um then I think that makes a bit more sense. But not everybody sells that, which is a yeah. thing it's difficult to. If you sell something quite commoditized, maybe you have to bring an insight. But then if you're playing a volume game, can't really do that either. So if you actually think about it, how often if you had to forward something, so somebody sends you a content, somebody sends you an email, Ollie, would you forward a good email to somebody else be like, hey, this is a good email. You gotta you gotta see this. Or if it's a video, would you say, hey, dude, Sean, you got to watch this, this video, this YouTube video, this, this video. This is a really funny video. If you think about it, more people are actually willing to forward and share a video more than a text email, which then helps with your conversion rates because now more people are seeing it. And if you think about it, it's, it's probably a true case because I know personally – I don't really forward emails that I think are just great emails, but I will forward a video that I think is a really funny video. Yeah, I can. So the the criteria for you forwarding it is: did I get enough? I hate the word value, but value meaning entertainment, information, something else out of it. So some people do their proposals; they'll send the proposal in PDF format, DocuSign, yeah. whatever, and then they'll do a quick blitz through it on the video on the whatever else. Um, and they'll go through, okay, so here, by the way, technical person who CC'd, this is your bit here. Take a look at that. And then the next person has their bit. And uh, I inserted this clause here just so that you know that I definitely did what you asked and so on, right? That's for the multi-threading around different people, decision makers, that kind of stuff. I like that. And you can see that getting folded through and that being appreciated rather than, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Sales, could we have like 30 minutes with you because I'm someone else who needed to be involved and I'm not. And then that's both people's time being wasted. But so that one I can see. I don't know if I got just an outright prospecting email. Would I go, like, that was great. Like, let me forward it to Sean. Yeah. It's another prospecting email. Do you need that? Yeah. But unless it was a good script for us for us to learn from ourselves and maybe try and implement. But uh, I, I know what you mean. I just, the way I am, I, I wouldn't do it. Got it. So let's go, let's go the opposite side of the spectrum here. What about if we do some of the cons of video email? You know, play the other side. Um, some things that come to me mind for me is one thing I've had in the past is sometimes if your video is too long, it won't you can't send it. So you have to downsize it and it takes time and stuff. So if the video is too long, you can't send it. So there's probably a sweet spot you want to have for sending that in that email. And I know, like, you know, yeah, Yahoo, Gmail, and Outlook, sometimes they don't support you embedding videos and emails. So those can go into a very um, you know, what I like to say is your marketing or promotions folder um, and not being delivered. Um, so those are some of the cons. And I guess, you know, deliverability in general might be a little bit worse with sending a scaling amount of videos. What do you think? Yeah, definitely deliverability, especially if you're telling to um, different types of company who are bigger, who have more firewalls and tech kind of stuff. An IT team, that's um, it's quite a big one. The deliverability, it's hitting spam. And all that kind of stuff. And particularly if you're sending a one-to-one -one video. So I'm sat here to do two at one time there. Your ideal video length is about 60 seconds to 90 tops. So I'm sat here with my phone and I'm going, hey, Sean, I've got this thing I want to share with you, um, blah, blah, blah. Insert one minute worth of, worth of content. I then send you that and you never get it because it went to spam because it's got a link. So that's my time. And uh, not everything is a numbers game. There's also a quality aspect. But if I wanted to get the most out of my day, that's not a great, situation is it so there's that i also think um some people just don't like it and yeah. that you have to factor in so i think to cover that it's not just i've heard this before reps who literally only send videos that's what they do all day and it works wow. good for them depends on who you sell to i personally would have a look i know people on my team who would not i know people on your team who would love that it all is a mix and particularly if you sell into highbrow c-level people and you sent them a two-minute video do they bother to click on it if they don't know you and respect you and that kind of stuff? No, maybe not. But maybe in the next one you will get. So I think you got to mix it up. It's not just do I do video, yes or no, A or B, black or white. You do it as the second video, uh, sorry, second email in your Every list sequence. of touches or do it a couple of times and A-B test not doing it in that email or something like that. I think you've got to try and cover all bases because otherwise it's just a wall of text emails in a row. That's not ideal. Doing too much video, if they don't like it, that ain't going to work either. So uh, I want your opinion on this. I know there's companies out there, there's people out there that always do those those videos with a coffee cup and they put their name on the coffee cup and they start saying, 
Let's have a virtual coffee. I personally, when it comes to video, I would rather it almost be, you know, come up with your own idea. I feel like too many people are doing that right now, but I'd love to kind of hear what you think. A, you know, is that one of those videos that, you know, attract you or B, um, do you like those kind of videos? So you're thinking like I'm holding up my iPad here and it's got like, hey, Sean, with me pointing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of like the bona fide I'm doing a video sales email thing. Um, but but video tell me that that has a good click through. So um, I won't argue, but I'd say moving forward in this day and age, 2023 and beyond, uh, it's got to be about you. So what I've seen before is um, my friends at Lead IQ, they used to do like a mariachi band. And because some of they had like musical instrument players in their team, so they would do like go out into the yard and they'd play a song per account and they would send that to each account and it would be very custom made and all that kind of stuff. Would you do that? I'd love to see you do it, but you shouldn't do that because you don't like that. You don't have that mm-hmm. talent or that interest. So um, I think you've, you've got to make it about you. Like don't buy a ukulele and try and do the gimmick. You should yeah. do, if I can research you and I'm, oh look, I find Sean's a former um, semi-pro tennis player. And if I like tennis and I've got a racket, I'll show you my racket, right? And that's that's us connecting and that's a one-to-one thing. So I think you've got to do it in that way. But if you've got nothing else as a fail safe, you, I, I guess putting the hey name thing is kind of the done thing. Yeah, I think, I mean, you got to be unique and you come up with your own strategy. I remember, was it, uh, I think, Ollie, it was, um, we, we spoke to somebody about a year ago and we we're talking about the UFC and Patty Pimblett from the UK. Oh, and yeah. then didn't he didn't he send a, a picture of my face on Patty Pimblett's body? Well, it was what was it? A, I forgot. Yeah, what it was. you got but, photoshopped into his face, wasn't it? And yeah, you looked I, really, really bad. I'm sorry, but it just oh, didn't flatter you, did it? You know what? Though I would be more willing to reply to something like that because it was a conversation we had. It was very personal. It was unique. It wasn't just a, an iPad or a coffee cup, but uh, that was a good one um, that we had. Uh, I think it was about a year ago now. Yeah, I wonder what they're doing now. That <laughs> that was classic. The whole team on Slack erupted when I posted that. So thank you to that rep. That was great. Yeah. Well, anything before we go? Anything to add about video? Um, do you currently, you know, I know you work a lot with campaigns and a lot with our team on different things. Do you put a lot of video into your campaigns right now? I think we should all do a little bit more. And if you think of it, like our own habits, this is kind of always the argument you hear. I, I never watch any TV or watch YouTube videos because I can pick what I, I see and all that kind of stuff. It's always there on demand. And, uh, and people don't really like to read huge long blog posts anymore. They want to get the snippets, the quick information. That's why Instagram reels are so big and TikToks are so big because it's quick and it's faster and our attention spans are less. But it's it's going to go that way more and more, I believe. So that tells you video in sales is going to be a good thing. But I still think it's it's useless if it's not useful and that sounds super obvious but just doing a video because i should do video you might as well just do a better email at that point you, you'll get quicker returns so find it find a useful and more efficient productive way to do a video if you need to if it benefits you if it helps you in getting that prospect from zero to one then worry about it but beyond that i don't know it's um it's a tough one it's been around for a while no one seems to have cracked it at a big scale and that's probably for a reason but i think it's coming perfect well there is the the opinion on video from ollie whitfield um i want to thank everyone for joining us today uh, another great episode very unique episode where we're talking about video emails um thank you for everybody listening uh, if you enjoyed the show don't forget to, to leave us a review hopefully a five-star review um, wherever you're listening from, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. We bring on guests. We also just have rants between Ollie and I. Um, so uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Come to the next one uh, and see you soon. Thank you again.